Now we are going to practice evaluating our resonance structures. In this, um, we are going to be determining whether our resonance structures are good structures or are they bad structures. Why do we care about whether resonance structures are good or bad? Well, typically when we're being asked to draw the resonance structures for a particular molecule, we focus on drawing the good structures and we tend to not draw the structures that we determine are bad. The reason that we don't draw bad structures is that we believe that they don't really accurately reflect what the molecule is like in reality. So we want to focus on the good structures that we think are accurate representations of the molecule. So let's start by coming up with a list of what makes a resonance structure good versus bad. Really, when we're looking at good versus bad resonance structures, um, mostly what we're focusing on are the formal charges in the structures. So a good resonance structure is going to be one that has not uh, most of the atoms with no formal charge at all. Remember that formal charges are a reflection of something being wrong with the atom's bonding environment. When an atom has a formal charge of zero, it means it's in an ideal bonding environment. And when it has a formal charge that is not zero, something has gone wrong with its bonding environment. So a good resonance structure is going to have no more than two formally charged atoms. So no more than two atoms with a formal charge. And so if we're looking at the three structures that we drew for this particular molecule, right away we can see that structure in the middle, that is a bad resonance structure because it has three atoms with formal charges and that's a lot of atoms to be in a bad bonding environment so three atoms with formal charges makes that resonance structure bad in addition to looking at how many atoms have formal charges we also want to look at what types of formal charges are on what types of atoms so if we have negative formal charges a good resonance structure will have the negative formal charges located on electronegative atoms. So if we have negative formal charges, they are on the most electronegative atom or atoms in the molecule. So remembering the trend for electronegativity, if this is our periodic table, electronegativity increases to the right and it increases up. And so the atoms that are up here in this part of the periodic table are the ones that are most electronegative. If we have to have negative formal charges on an atom in the molecule, we want to see the negative formal charges on the atom that is most electronegative. So let's compare this structure to this structure right here. We're looking at the position of the negative formal charge on both of these structures. The best resonance structure of these two is going to have the negative formal charge on the most electronegative atom. Take a look at your periodic table and you will see that oxygen is more electronegative than carbon, which means that this is the best structure of them because the negative charge is on oxygen, which is the most electronegative atom in this molecule. Now, a third thing that does come up in this example, in this molecule right here, which we've already decided is bad for other reasons, um, a third characteristic of a good resonance structure is that it does not have opposite formal charges on adjacent atoms. That's, that's a lot of words there. So no positive and negative charges on adjacent atoms. And that is 
this sort of arrangement right here. So a positive and negative formal charge on atoms that are directly bonded to each other or adjacent. That is also an indication of a really bad resonance structure. A good resonance structure does not have this type of bonding situation. Why? What exactly makes that bad? Well, what is the point of having side-by-side -side atoms with opposing charges when they can just very easily move their electrons in and resolve and create uh, two atoms that have no formal charges at all very easily, which is exactly what they'll do. So in addition to this structure being bad because it has three atoms with formal charges, it's also bad because it has adjacent carbons with opposite charges. So it also has C positive that's bonded to a C negative. And then in terms of this structure right here, it's just somewhere in the middle. It's not the best structure. It's also not a terrible structure. It's a perfectly fine structure. Let's continue practicing this with the rest of our examples. So here we have, again, how are we going to evaluate these three structures? We want to determine which one is the best and which one is the worst. And again, remember, we're focusing on formal charges. So in this example, we have one of our resonance structures that has no formal charges at all all that is always going to be the best possible resonance structure when you have no formal charges at all that means every single atom is in an ideal bonding environment that is fantastic so that one is the best because it has no formal charges so now let's take a look at these two right here uh, and what are we evaluating? Well, let's start. We've talked about focusing on the negative formal charge. When we have a negative formal charge, we want it to be on the most electronegative atom. So ideally, it would be on bromine, but it's not. It's on carbon. And we really can't compare these two molecules to each other because we have a carbon with a negative charge and a carbon with a negative charge. So you know, it's the same, and that's not going to be a basis of comparison. So we can't look at that. Um, the next thing, though, that we can look at is that we have carbon atoms with opposite formal charges, which is bad. So this is the worst structure because it has the C negative that's bonded directly to the C positive. And this structure over here is not great. A positive charge on an electronegative atom is bad, and a negative formal charge um, on a carbon is also not great, but it's, it's not a terrible resonance structure, and it's certainly not the worst. We have one more example to practice with. So in this set of molecules, all of them have formal charges. Um, and what can we say about them? Well, this has one formal charge, this has one, this has two formal charges. Here's something that we didn't really talk about. The magnitude of the formal charge is a big deal as well. So a two plus or a two minus, maybe you remember this from general chemistry, that is not good. Formal charges of plus one or minus one are okay, but when a molecule gets that far away from its ideal bonding environment, this is a really bad structure. In addition to being bad because of the po positive two formal charge, it also has atoms that are adjacent with opposite charges. So it has the positively charged sulfur that is directly bonded to the negatively charged carbon. So that structure's got two strikes against it. Now let's take a look at these two structures right here and try to figure out which one of these is better. We don't have a negative formal charge to go off of, which is unfortunate because that's a pretty easy tool. Instead, we have a positive formal charge. And so when we're thinking about where should we put a positive formal charge, where's the best place to put this positive formal charge, it's okay for us to think about that using kind of the opposite approach we would use when we were trying to figure out where to put a negative formal charge. Let's look back at that information. When we're trying to figure out where to put a negative formal charge, if we have a negative formal charge, we want them on the most electronegative atom. So we could assume 
if we had a positive formal charge, we should put that on the least electronegative atom. And that should make sense to you. We don't have a word for the opposite of electronegativity. So least electronegative atom of these two, where should it go? Carbon is a better choice for a positive charge. We don't think of carbon as an electronegative element. So this one is the best because carbon with a positive charge is better than electronegative sulfur with a positive charge.